Hey, welcome back. It's Tucson Tuesday yet again. One of the only nice things about Tuesday being that part of the week. <laughs> uh, today I got this little guy here. This is called the Lovebird. Now this is a knife from Jelly Jerry. And this is going to be the start of a large block looking at a lot of his knives because a lot of them are in sequential uh, order as they were all kind of uh, agreed upon at, at the start here. So, yeah, this is the uh, the TS-216. Hey, I got myself a little label on it and everything. Yeah, Lovebird. Now, this thing has a uh, wire pocket clip, which is interesting. Because so far, this is the only one I've seen from it. Unfortunately, it has kind of the problem that a lot of other companies do, where it's very, very flexible. Uh, which makes me worry that if you actually catch it on something, you're really going to bend it out of shape super quick. Uh, the Spyderco variants of them are just much stronger. Uh, they're just, you know, tempered to a uh, higher hardness or whatnot rather than um, trying to be super, super springy. So they end up being a little bit more durable. But regardless, that does give you a nice uh, flush... Uh, pocket clip sort of situation there that's uh you know fully deep carry and you don't have to worry about any screws or anything like that because it's basically top mounted it's mounted a little interesting in there and we'll get to that but uh let's go ahead and pop it open shall we kerblam yes this thing is uh well it's a little over three inch blade it's uh what 3.17 ish Right around there. Um, I suppose I could probably give you a little bit of an idea as to kind of what this thing is uh, about. Let's pull out my uh, two probably most familiar knives here. The Benchmade 940 and the uh, Spyderco PM2. So, where did my other knives go? Ah. Well, I at least have the uh, the rat number one there as well. So yeah, it's not an incredibly uh, incredibly large knife. It's a little bit more compact, and I am happy with that actually because this thing does uh, it extends rather than rounds off on uh, this end, which uh, does give me the ability to get my uh, full gorilla paws all over that thing. Which uh, does remind me of what uh, the QSP Parrot ends up doing, where it doesn't round that over. And because of that, very comfortable. This is fairly similar uh, knife kind of shape and everything as well. It does have a compound grind. It basically makes the tip just a little tiny bit thicker near the end there. But uh, for the most part, I really kind of think that's uh, cosmetic because the, the tip really wouldn't have been incredibly thin otherwise. But that's perfectly fine. We got that uh, one-sided thumb stud because it nestles into the scale here. Uh, that's certainly not a first. Uh, I have another couple of uh, very popular examples uh, that do that same thing. Here's a CGRB Rhea. It's the one in my carta. And there's also the uh, CRKT CEO, and both of those do that. And people seem to uh, either like it or hate it f with those kind of knives. Um, but a lot of people ended up accepting them. So if that's not your uh, personal preference on something, then uh, you might want to look elsewhere. But this thumb stud, and you can see it's very, very smooth on the top there, but very narrowed on the top. So this is kind of designed for you to put your thumb on top and push forward. And yeah, fires out with authority when you do it that way. A lot like um, how a lot of uh, people end up saying that the CGRB Rhea feels spring assisted or whatnot um, when they open it up. It's, uh, it's very effective at doing that. And you can see right here, we even have uh, some jimping kind of going on on the front and the back part of the scale here. And, uh, you know, when I first looked at it, I thought, this is probably going to be uncomfortable. And yet, it isn't. 
Um, feels pretty darn nice in my hands overall. You can feel those little bumps there, so it is, I guess, some sort of a little bit of a hot spot, but uh, not much of one. And uh, yeah, this isn't an incredibly hard use knife anyway, so you're really not going to be bearing down and having something force that back up into your hand there. Uh, we can see that this guy has shredded carbon fiber rather than, uh, you know, their uh, checkered weave or their um, striations that they've done on a lot of others. So, hey, it's nice to see something a little bit different. And, yes, I absolutely love the fact that they do it on both sides. I guess that makes this a, uh, a bolster lock rather than a frame lock, but, you know, it's effectively the same, and I appreciate that a lot because... Uh, you don't have the pocket clip messing around with uh, the frame. Uh, that can happen very easily on a lot of people's designs here. It's not too bad in the reverse grip. You have that uh, jimping there on the back as well. Yeah, pretty darn comfortable if you really want to uh, bury this thing deep into whatever you're whatever it might be that you're cutting you can certainly see the uh the stainless steel insert going on there and uh yeah you've probably seen from that but this is 14c 28n it's the only blade steel i've seen from it thus far but uh who knows maybe if it is really popular they might uh make it in something else my guess would be m390 which i don't know to me is a little boring um just in general, uh, but yeah, that's hey, some people really appreciate it, so there's all sorts of that. All right, so the blade stock on this is 3.7 millimeters, so it's uh, a little tiny bit thicker than um, than you might get on uh, kind of this uh, parrot that's actually the parrot's pretty darn uh, thick as well. I thought it was a little bit thinner. This is obviously just a little bit thicker. This is probably 3.4 millimeters, if I remember right. Or 3.5, somewhere right around there. That being said, though, it is basically, uh, as near as makes no difference, uh, a full flat grind. I guess with that little flat part up at the top there, it would be a high saber grind or something like that. But uh, very slicey. Uh, this thing does a lot of uh, good things, or it does a lot of things really darn well. I appreciate it quite a bit. You can take the thumb stud out. I don't necessarily know why you would do that, because the hole is, um, you know, small to be able to mount that, and there's absolutely no other opening mechanism. So, you know, it's nice that you can uh, take it out if you're going to be doing any modding to the blade, whether you're going to stone wash it or acid etch it or whatever you might have then uh you know you can certainly take that out and that's nice it's uh it's about 3.6 ounces like 3.61 uh, 102 grams and uh as far as the thickness goes it's 0 0.53 inches so that is um Basically the same thing that we got going on here with the uh, Spyderco PM2. But this is a little bit more uh, contoured than the uh, the flat slab scales there on the uh, on the PM2. So pretty darn comfortable. With uh, all of that out of the way though, uh, let's go ahead and take a look on the inside of this thing here. And I do believe for this one in particular, I am going to need a T6. Yeah, for the scales. Okay. I mean, I don't necessarily have to take them out. Come on out, buddy. Yeah, these guys uh, drop out pretty easily. And the pivot. Okay, well, there's the backspacer as well that came out. <laughs> All right, yeah, on the inside here, we have a couple of holes you can see there. Um, the maybe uh, had something to do with the different mounting mechanism they might have been thinking about at one point. I'm not quite sure. 
It's really not going to do much in the way of uh, weight relieving, but uh, that's okay. And you can see there's no skeletonization really going on in here outside of a uh, kind of little divot area for the uh, the lanyard little hole pass through. But that's okay because it's actually milled out from the front because these carbon fiber scales are on lays. So there you go. Internal blade stop. Obviously they're uh, ceramic bearings and they're uh, nylon cages and all that sort of stuff. And here is the pocket clip and it's mounting. And apparently I got some schmutz on the inside there. So yeah, this, it's not all that bad. It's kind of an interesting uh, mounting mechanism here uh, where it actually relies heavily on, uh, well, it actually being fully in place. And then uh, the pressure from the backspacer being on it uh, to keep it in place. So that's kind of how they got around uh, trying to do the whole thing with having a, uh, a wide head screw that would uh, anchor on both of those. It's kind of an interesting way to go about it. But otherwise, yeah, this thing is uh, fairly simple on the inside. And uh, that's all it really needs to be. I mean, it's, it's really utilitarian blade shape that's probably going to be uh, good for people in a lot of different regions and whatnot. You know, obviously I usually prefer um, quite large knives, uh, mostly because they're comfortable in my hands. Uh, so I'm always tickled pink or whatever other color. I'm not really a fan of pink, but uh, uh, when a smaller knife actually does accommodate my hands, uh, more often than not, if that happens, it's probably a Wong design, but this is nice that it's, um, from somebody else. We do have polished titanium, uh, collars on here as well, so you could, uh, anodize those a different color if that was, um, your wish. Slap this guy back together super quick. Come on, buddy. Uh -huh. It's just a little free spinning at the moment. Well, it's most of the way there, but I am going to have to employ the gator grip, or not the gator grip, a gorilla grip. Generally don't have problems with uh, doing these, but apparently this one was just going to go ahead and give me some trouble here. Uh, yeah. All right. So we're nice and back together. Super simple construction, but yeah, I really do have to uh, give it to Tucson on uh, the consistency on uh, putting things back together and whatnot. Uh, their tolerances are pretty good for that. Uh, which I appreciate, and I forget sometimes when I'm uh, dealing with uh, another company, especially a lot more of the uh, budget knives and whatnot, um, when I do have difficulty putting them back together. And I'm like, why is this a problem? That's the uh, most recent specimen that I was uh, probably complaining about that with was the, uh, the Ironfly Zesty here, where... Yeah, these things were having a heck of a time re-threading correctly. And, uh, yeah, I just really haven't had any problems with uh, any Tucson's taking them apart and all that sort of stuff. Gotta love it. But, yeah, I really do appreciate this design quite a bit. Uh, I do like a lot of Jelly Jerry's designs. And uh, a, lot, a lot of them that I have are considerably larger than this. Some of them are uh, just a little bit, but yeah, this is kind of a small one for, uh, 
for his uh, forte, at least with the uh, the Tucson designs that have uh, been done thus far. I guess outside of his slip joint, but hey, it's a slip joint. What are you going to do? <laughs> but yeah, that's basically everything that I have to say right here about the Lovebird. It's a... Uh, it's a really nice knife, especially if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, you are kind of boned. So definitely keep that in mind. It's um, less ambidextrous than uh, than a flipper or uh, others kind of would be. But other than that, the only thing that I could really say might need a little bit of improvement would be um, Tucson's uh, strength for their, uh, for their wire pocket clip. But uh, outside of that, Everything else about this thing is uh, it's pretty darn great. We got the plunge grind, and it does have a gradual sort of thing here, but I've sharpened it up uh, twice, and uh, I haven't really got a smile yet. And hey, that's a little bit better than uh, some others out there. <laughs> so yeah, and at least this one's uh, probably pretty darn easy to extend that uh, sharpening toil as well. So, yeah, pretty nice execution. I said, yeah, way too many times in this video. It's been right in the middle of something instead of me using it as an um. But, uh, yeah, apologies for that. But, ah, what are you going to do? It's the end of the video. That's the 216 Lovebird. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo.